You're listening to the Study Legal English podcast, the world's first legal English podcast, helping lawyers and law students become fluent in legal English. Hello and welcome to episode 63 of the Study Legal English podcast. I am your host, Louise, and today we will hear the final fictional monologue from a speaker who works in alternative dispute resolution. We've already heard from a mediator and an arbitrator, and you may well be able to guess what this one will be. Anyway, as you listen, try to answer the following question. What is this person's job? So... Let's go straight into it and listen to the speaker. I handle a lot of workplace disputes between employer and employee. And in recent years, I have seen an increase in conflicts related to harassment in the workplace. These cases often involve a female employee who wants to start a claim against her employer or a colleague due to intimidating and offensive behaviour, which amounts to discrimination under the Equality Act of 2010. The first step is for the employee to try and resolve things with the employer or the colleague, using the company's own internal grievance procedure. But if this fails, things can escalate and the employee may wish to sue the employer or the colleague. In most cases, before lodging a claim with the employment tribunal, it's mandatory to contact the organisation I work for first. At this point, we offer the parties to the dispute the option to participate in early conciliation to try to settle the dispute without going to court. If the parties accept, they need to submit an early conciliation notification form to us and then we explain the conciliation process to them. Normally, we do this with a quick phone call which lasts about 10 minutes. Then, moving forward, we arrange sessions to talk with the parties separately. This can happen over the phone, face-to-face or Skype. I try to help the parties understand each other, to speak to both sides and to try to resolve the situation. Something that is difficult to deal with is that sometimes the parties try to get advice from me as to what I think would happen if they took the case to the employment tribunal. I'm not a lawyer and I don't have all the answers and it is not my job to give this advice. When this happens, I have to explain to the parties that we don't advise about what might happen if they proceed with a claim, but rather my aim is to help the parties end the conflict and move on. If we manage to reach an agreement, I record this agreement on a settlement form. The parties must sign it and then it becomes legally binding. Sometimes parties don't want to go through conciliation. If this is the case, we issue an early conciliation certificate and then it's up to the parties to lodge a claim with the Employment Tribunal. Great. So, first of all, what do you think this person's job is? Say it out loud after the beep. Hopefully you got it correct. This person spoke about parties trying to resolve a dispute via conciliation. So she is a conciliator. Let's take a closer look at what she said and the vocabulary she used. In the first part, our speaker talked about the types of dispute she deals with. She said that she mainly handles workplace disputes between employers and employees. Of course, an employer is the person who gives employment, gives work to someone, and an employee is the person who receives 
the employment or receives the work, the job. There are many words in legal English which end with either ER or OR and EE, which signify a relationship between parties. A tip is that the party with an ER or OR ending is the active party doing the verb or performing the verb. So an employer employs someone, a conciliator conciliates a process, a licensor licenses a product, a leasor is the person who leases a property and so on. Can you think of any others? Let me know by leaving me a comment or emailing me at louise at studylegalenglish.com and there are some exercises about this in the final quiz section for podcast pro members at studylegalenglish.com forward slash episode 63. So our speaker talked about dealing with cases of discrimination in the workplace. Discrimination is prohibited by the Equality Act 2010 in England and Wales, which aims to ensure that a person is not treated less favourably than another person due to particular characteristics such as age, race, sex and religion. The speaker states that firstly, when a workplace dispute arises, employees should try to resolve cases by lodging a complaint with the company and following the company's internal grievance procedures. This means the mechanism inside the company which deals with complaints and problems. Let's listen to that first part again. I handle a lot of workplace disputes between employer and employee. And in recent years, I have seen an increase in conflicts related to harassment in the workplace. These cases often involve a female employee who wants to start a claim against her employer or a colleague due to intimidating and offensive behaviour, which amounts to discrimination under the Equality Act of 2010. The first step is for the employee to try and resolve things with the employer or the colleague using the company's own internal grievance procedure. But if this fails, things can escalate and the employee may wish to sue the employer or the colleague. Okay, so in this next part, our speaker states that if the dispute cannot be resolved via the internal grievance procedure, then the next step is to try to resolve the dispute outside of court before lodging a claim with the Employment Tribunal. The Employment Tribunal is a tribunal of first instance which deals with employment disputes such as unfair dismissal, discrimination and disputes regarding pay. And appeals go to the Employment Appeals Tribunal. As I mentioned in another podcast episode, there are many ways to talk about suing someone. In this case, our speaker uses the collocation to lodge a claim. To lodge a claim in this case means to file a claim. However, the verb to lodge is most commonly used in the collocation to lodge a complaint. Pay attention to the prepositions used with this collocation. For example, you can say, I am lodging a complaint to or with HR against my boss, which means you will send the official complaint to HR, human resources, and the complaint is about your boss. You have a problem with your boss. Also, don't forget that in England and Wales, we have a distinction between courts and tribunals. If you don't know what it is, I suggest listening to podcast episodes 46 and 57, which talk about the court system and tribunals in England and Wales. So, in the jurisdiction of England and Wales, in most cases involving workplace disputes, such as discrimination or unfair dismissal, 
where a party has not been satisfied with the company's internal grievance procedure, the injured party may then want to lodge a claim with the employment tribunal in order to litigate the dispute. Before they do file a claim, however, they must first contact an organisation called ACAS. The best way to do this is by submitting a form with the contact details of the parties to the dispute via this organisation's website. ACAS stands for the Advisory Conciliation and Arbitration Service. It is an independent and impartial public body which provides a range of free and confidential services such as conciliation in order to help prevent and resolve workplace disputes. When a party contacts ACAS, they are given the opportunity to participate in something called early conciliation. If the parties agree to this, then initially conciliation is explained to them by a conciliator and then sessions take place in an attempt to reach a resolution. In conciliation and in the employment tribunal, parties can get legal advice from lawyers. However, it's not mandatory for parties to have a legal representative and they can represent themselves in this process. According to ACAS's website, around 75% of cases which use the conciliation service are resolved. So, Our speaker mentioned quite a few of these things that I've just talked about. Let's listen to that second part again. In most cases, before lodging a claim with the employment tribunal, it's mandatory to contact the organisation I work for first. At this point, we offer the parties to the dispute the option to participate in early conciliation to try to settle the dispute without going to court. If the parties accept, they need to submit an early conciliation notification form to us and then we explain the conciliation process to them. Normally, we do this with a quick phone call which lasts about 10 minutes. Then, moving forward, we arrange sessions to talk with the parties separately. This can happen over the phone, face-to-face or Skype. I try to help the parties understand each other, to speak to both sides and to try to resolve the situation. Great. So, in the next part, our speaker talks about some of the difficulties of her job. She mentions that she is not a lawyer and can't give legal advice. So, conciliators don't need to be qualified lawyers, but they are normally experts in a particular type of dispute. For example, in this particular case, workplace disputes. She also mentions that if the parties are able to reach an agreement, it will be recorded and signed and will be legally binding. If, on the other hand, parties can't reach a settlement, the case may be decided in a few different ways. It could be by a judge in an employment tribunal, by an arbitrator through arbitration, or even settled by the parties themselves in a private settlement. Let's listen again to that last part. Something that is difficult to deal with is that sometimes the parties try to get advice from me as to what I think would happen if they took the case to the employment tribunal. I'm not a lawyer and I don't have all the answers and it is not my job to give this advice. When this happens, I have to explain to the parties that we don't advise about what might happen if they proceed with a claim, but rather My aim is to help the parties end the conflict and move on. If we manage to reach an agreement, I record this agreement on a settlement form. 
The parties must sign it and then it becomes legally binding. Sometimes parties don't want to go through conciliation. If this is the case, we issue an early conciliation certificate and then it's up to the parties to lodge a claim with the Employment Tribunal. Great. So I wanted to make a few points about conciliation. Back in episode 60, I asked the question to you, how is conciliation different to mediation and arbitration? Now, this is actually quite a difficult question to answer. Certainly, conciliation is different from arbitration, which is commonly used to settle international disputes between states and commercial disputes between companies. And it is quite a formal process which can involve calling witnesses and hearing evidence, whereas conciliation and mediation are much less formal than this, with the mediator and the conciliator having less power than the arbitrator. Another difference is that if parties have agreed to arbitration in a contract, they have to take part in this process in the event of a dispute, whereas parties voluntarily enter into mediation and conciliation and can walk away at any time. With arbitration, the arbitration award, the judgment of the arbitrator, is automatically binding on the parties, whereas in mediation, the parties can choose whether or not to agree to the final settlement. If they sign it, it does become legally binding, but if they don't, they don't need to follow it, and sometimes in mediation, legally binding agreements aren't drawn up and parties simply agree informally to honour the resolution. With conciliation, if parties are able to reach a resolution, this should be followed and parties should sign an agreement which will be legally binding. So, although the differences between conciliation and arbitration are quite distinct, when it comes to the differences between mediation and conciliation, it's not exactly that straightforward because often in England the terms conciliation and mediation are used as synonyms and it can be difficult to see the difference between them. Conciliation in England has been around since 1896 when the government launched a voluntary conciliation and arbitration service for employers and trade unions on workplace disputes. It's often used with employment disputes when the situation is very tense between parties and they wish to litigate. For example, one party is on the verge of lodging a case with the employment tribunal whereas the term mediation is often used quite broadly. It can be used for a range of legal disputes before the situation between the parties gets so tense. It's especially used in relation to family law matters, and in the case of divorcing couples, in most cases they must attend an initial meeting about mediation before litigation. Some people say that mediators are more passive and conciliators more active, but this is not always the case. It can vary from organisation to organisation. So I'm sorry not to be completely clear on this. Unfortunately, that is the reality at the moment. What's it like in your country? Are these forms of alternative dispute resolution used? Are they successful? And what's the distinction between them? Let me know. Send me a message on social media or by sending me an email to louise at studylegalenglish.com. Great. So that's the end of today's episode. In the next episodes, we will have a change of topic. So stay tuned. If you're a podcast pro member, head over to studylegalenglish.com forward slash episode 63 for all of your member benefits and as always of course if you like the show please share it with others and send me your comments thank you for listening and see you next time <laughs>